Uh, I'm Mariangela Franceschini from Mass General Hospital. I want to thank you, the organizer of this session, for um, having me present, the, uh, giving me the possibility to present my work at this uh, great audience. So we zoom out a little bit more and uh, we lose all the beautiful images and high resolution microscopy talks uh, and move uh, to humans. And, uh, um, and we use diffuse light, so even if I will not present an image, it, it will be pretty blurry. So, uh, but me and my husband have worked for more than 20 years in the field, and our mission has been uh, uh, clinical translation, but also provide the, our community with the tool we develop. So this comes with uh, a lot of... Uh, conflict of interest, but this talk will be evidence-based and, uh, and unbiased. So near infrared spectroscopy, just for the few people that may not know what the technology I'm using, use a, a laser LED light in the 600-900 nanometer spectra region to um, um, illuminate the tissue. And a few centimeters away, we detect uh, the attenuation of light due to absorption and scattering. And if you use the beer lumber row uh, in CW, we can get uh, changes in absorption, and at multiple wavelengths, we get uh, uh, changes in hemoglobin. Uh, diffuse correction spectroscopy is uh, uh, not new, but uh, growing uh, rapidly uh, near infrared spectroscopy technology that uh, instead of measuring absorption, uh, doesn't just measure attenuation, he measure. Um, loss of coherence uh, or correlation by using a long coherent length laser and acquiring a, a single speck of uh, uh, detection to uh, measure the fluctuation in the speckled pattern. And uh, my measuring the uh, uh, temporal autocorrelation function and decay, you can re get uh, mm, that measure is proportional to blood flow. And uh, in the sense that uh, faster is the decay and faster is the blood flow. So for more than 10 years, I've been drunk in uh, NIRS and DCS devices in the neonatal intensive care units. And they don't just uh, allow me to measure hemoglobin concentration and blood flow, but they also allow me to measure oxygen metabolism. So cerebral metabolic rate of oxygen is proportional to the product between uh, blood flow and oxygen extraction fraction. And oxygen metabolism, especially for the brain, uh, we believe is very important if we want to understand the uh, brain health. So uh, our measurements, uh, when we want to measure quantitative uh, uh, brain mm, um, CMRO2 in infants, uh, are very simple. We use a handle probe for a few seconds, and we measure several spots in the head. And uh, with this technology, we started like 10 years ago and um, measuring hypoxic ischemic injury in infants. And what we noticed at MGH before therapeutic in, in hypothermia came, uh, in the acute phase, this uh, infant newborn had uh, very elevated uh, CMRO2 compared to normal controls. And this was before because uh, excitotoxic mechanism in this phase uh, were uh, increasing uh, neuronal activity. Uh, most re more recently, we measure uh, therapeutic hypothermia in this uh, infant population, and what we saw that uh, therapeutic hypothermia is able to reverse this high CMRO2 and actually reduce CMRO2 uh, a lot, and uh, and this uh, um, allow us to um, um, this technique allows to see how much CMRO2 is decreased. And, uh, and so uh, the idea is that with frequency domain years in DCS, uh, we are able to individualize uh, and optimize uh, neuroprotective therapies. Uh, because of this uh, um, and other um, prom promising results, uh, together with the ISS, uh, with the support of uh, SBIR, we uh, built the first uh, uh, fully integrated uh, uh, frequency domain DCS system commercially available. The system has uh, eight detectors and one source for the diffuse correction spectroscopy side, and uh, four detectors and eight wavelengths for the frequency domain NIRS. And uh, it's all working in parallel, and 
we can acquire both blood flow and hemoglobin concentration at the same time. So what we did, uh, because everything is simultaneous, we want also our sensors to be co-localized. So we had to co-localize sources and detector uh, for the two technology in the same spots. And um, so uh, in, with this system, uh, this, simultaneously, we cannot just separate absorption and scattering, but we also separate blood flow, or you know, the blood flow in this, in, in this case, uh, the Brownian diffusion, since it's a fan liquid phantom, from the absorption and scattering. And um, in addition to using this device uh, in Boston, we brought it uh, in Africa. And, uh, Two weeks ago, uh, me and my colleague uh, were in Guinea-Bissau, West Africa, where we measure in seven days 400 children in seven villages uh, to study how malnutrition affects uh, brain development. Uh, more than in September 2015, we brought the device uh, to Uganda at the Cure Hospital to study if we can um, help uh, uh, prognose. Uh, pronostic uh, capability of hydrocephalus. Now, hydrocephalus uh, in Uganda and in sub-Saharan sub 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 Africa is unfortunately very frequent and is caused by uh, neonatal sepsis that is uh, one of the major causes of death uh, in uh, newborn in, uh, in Africa. And uh, here are the CT images of the 35 infants we measure. And uh, as you can see with the black area that are water, uh, these brain are very damaged, much more hydrocephalus is much more worse than what is uh, uh, seen in the US. So because uh, there are these uh, regions that have not enough uh, brain to get re reliable measurements, uh, we had to uh, go back and test our modeling. And uh, so um, based on data quality criteria, we uh, were able to identify the area where the thickness of this, the, the brain is, is too small, like less than six millimeter. And so with frequency domain multidistance uh, methods, we can divide this brain between uh, uh, very thin or thicker cortical area um, in the area where we measure in very good agreement with the uh, CT scans. Now, this is important, but it's not as important if you think that already in 1930, with light, uh, they could see that there was hydrocephalus and not much brain under. What's important is to predict outcomes. And so here are the CT scan pre-surgery. And uh, these are the CT scan of two kids uh, six months later. And you can see there are cases where there is not that favorable outcome where the cortical uh, thickness doesn't improve, and, but there are favorable cases. So by measuring with the uh, frequency domain DCS, what we saw that uh, if you have a thick brain, we saw that hemoglobin concentration is much lower in the kids that six months later will have a low outcome. So with these measurements one day post-surgery, we can predict that if the hemoglobin doesn't go back after you release the pressure, there is something wrong with the brain. In, for the thick, uh, uh, thicker cortex, uh, what we saw in this case is CMRO2 that is lower for the one that will have bad outcome. Essentially, if the neurons are dead and there is lower consumption, there is no hope that this brain will go back. So this uh, is very important, and even if there are preliminary data, uh, they show how this methodology can work well both in the developing and developed uh, countries to uh, predict therapy outcomes. So in addition to handle spot measurements, uh, we also did, uh, uh, we want to do continuous measurements, like during surgery on the, the neuro ICU. I have one and a half minute. <laughs> And uh, so we want to use this yes because uh, you use single mode fiber, so it's very easy to apply to the head of patients. Uh, and uh, with this method, we can measure cerebral blood flow, cerebral autoregulation, and has uh, Paris, for example, show in the um, Tra tra clinical translation section one hour ago, we can measure intracranial pressure and critical crossing pressure. So for instance, uh, in this aneurysm case uh, that has a lot of invasive uh, um, probes, uh, 
uh, with our non-invasive blood flow, we see that we can measure blood flow and is in good agreement with the perfusion measure on the hemadex. And uh, giving blood flow measure in these patients uh, will allow me to measure uh, loss of a cerebral autoregulation uh, has done in senior. So when the cerebral perfusion pressure goes low, I, I can see that. So uh, intracalorian pressure, I will not have to talk about it. And, but uh, so what is important in addition to developing technology to go faster and measure uh, arterial pulsation with this, yes, so what we are in the last year and a half, we have been in, in inventing new technology that use pulse laser with time resolve this, yes, to achieve the greater brain sensitivity. Not only that, but with this device, we can get blood flow and uh, uh, hemoglobin oxygenation in the uh, bottom layers. And because of ad advanced uh, in, t in detection technology uh, done mostly in Italy by the Milano Group, we can now, uh, we, are, we are enabled now to package these into wearable wireless optodes to dramatically advance monitoring and fun um, or neuromonitoring and functional brain imaging. Thank you so much uh, to all my collaborators and the patients. Uh, uh, and the opportunity to talk here.